You're in one of the most iconic, what we like to call in the punk rock scene, like one of the most punk rock movies of all, and uh, The Return of the Living Dead. So the very first one, it's funny because I saw the second one before I saw the first one just due to my age. I mean, the second one hit TV. And I remember going back and seeing the first one, and I was, you know, 12-year-old mind. I was quite confused with Thomas Matthews being in book. I was like, well, uh, I didn't know what was going on. But uh yeah, so tell us what that experience was like. <laughs> okay, there was an actor strike going on in Hollywood. I'd done like four films, and my agent goes, hey, there's a really interesting director, Dan O'Bannon, doing a horror film, and it's interesting. It's got punk rock music. He wants it to, It's a zombie film. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll go in. I'd love to go in on it because no one's working right now. It'd be great to get a job doing something. But I, I read the script, and I go, I could play this, this nerd. You know, I was a full-on punk rock kid, but I was – I wasn't full hardcore, you know, like Mark Venturini's character. I was more new wave because in my real life, I love punk rock and everything, but I would go to clubs and dance and I was kind of a new wave guy. I wasn't hardcore punk rock. And so I just totally, you know, I identified with this character. I went in and read for it like four or five times and, the, and, and Dan O'Bannon put us together with all these different kids and would rehearse scenes over and over and over again until he saw chemistry he liked and then he put out the offers and we got and I got the job and I was thrilled because, you know, the the un, a union had gone on strike and we had got in under the we're working. Anyway, we're in Hollywood making a movie, you know, and, and I, it's a bunch of kids. I knew I knew Tom Matthews, you know, and I had be, and Brian Peck also went to USC. So I knew him, too, because I went to USC, graduated USC. I'd only been out of USC about a year, maybe a year and a half. And, uh, you know, it was super fun. It shot in L.A. So I was in my city. I got to drive to locations in my car, you know, and show up at the studio and just have a green room that we'd change in and hang out in. And they built studios. And we had some outside exterior locations, which I love. You know, I love. And we shot at night a bunch of times, which was really kind of fucking spooky and cool. So, you know, I really didn't know what was going on in the rest of the film. I just knew what was going on in my scenes. So when I saw the film, I had no idea all that shit was going on, even though I'd read the script. But if I'm not in the scene at that time, it was hard for me to understand why I would be reading the script. But uh, no, it was really fucking. You're worried, you're worried about your own performance, not to sound selfish, but I, I totally understand you. You want to be able to knock it out of the ballpark. So, it, you know. Actors are understand you know like i'm just interested in being the best i can be and what what you know when the camera's on me and and that i i love that movie. the more i watch it the more i'm like yeah that's fucking cool man nobody knew what dan o'bannon was doing but dan o'bannon he's a real genius to make those zombies you know fast and funny and to play punk rock music and make it a comedy zombie movie it's the first zombie you know, yeah. now that's become a, you know, cliche genre, but he's the first guy to invent a genre of zombie movie, comedy zombie, zombie movies. R.I.P., man. He's so awesome. And that's another cast that we're like, we're totally like family now. I didn't see those people for 20 years, you know, and then then I get to see him at a big screening and there's a bunch of people who love the movie and God couldn't make me happier. I mean, I'm really I'm so lucky I got involved in those two movies, you know, because they've given me like a second career. Like I had They've given me the convention, horror convention career where I get to meet all people I love and fans that I love. And it's just a really a wonderful thing that I've learned to appreciate and really love and enjoy. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Did, did you get any of like the punk rock bands during like those years that like recognized you from the movie and like would pop when they saw you or now? Not to my knowledge. No one ever came up to me and said, you, it happens now. Yeah. But back then I was moving on, doing other work, you know, like, you, you know, young actors do horror movies generally back in those days when they, they were the only thing you could get. Like if you could get a horror movie, that's good, you know, because you're young, you're not a star, yeah. you're not in a TV show. You don't have like, you know, you're a young actor, you do horror movies. If, you, if you're lucky, you know, you get into a couple horror movies. That's how why I did them, you know, for experience and, you know, for, you know, uh, exposure, you know. But I never thought they would amount to anything. I never thought they would be, you know, anything other than someone saw them that weekend. I love horror movies, you know, and that's it. But they became something that no one could have anticipated. So 
after that, some people, and it freaks me out because I'm in a surfing world and another act, you know, acting world. And when someone knows me as Chuck from Return of the Living Dead, it just, I love it. I don't, that doesn't happen to me very often unless I'm at a convention. But if it happens once a year, I'm like, oh, that person knows me from Return of the Living Dead. I have a special place in my heart for that person. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, and you're you're definitely right on. I mean, like Brad Pitt was like in cutting class. Jennifer Anderson was in the first Leprechaun. I mean, yeah. it, it, you know, it, it's a start. You know, yeah, Trish Arquette. Yeah, I mean, people do hor- young actors do horror movies. Usually, it's how they start. Yep. And Jamie Lee Curtis is an example of that by far, and she was almost like typecasted at for a while. You know, she couldn't even get out of that. But but you know. And now she's back doing them again. (laughs) The wheel turns for everyone. If you can just stay alive, Uh the wheel will turn. It turns for us all. 